Okay, this little video is on uh, aseptic technique and how to grow microorganisms in a laboratory. Mm. It's not really good, is it? Anyway, oh, okay, here we go. So, um, two ways, two places in which we could grow organisms. So, these diagrams look quite tiny to me, never mind. Uh, one is in a broth, which is a liquid agar, and the other is on an agar plate, which is um, a plastic or glass dish called a Petri dish, after Mr Petri, presumably, um, where you would pour agar in and then it would solidify. So we first need to look at what nutrients need to be available to the organisms and what the conditions inside that tube must be like. So you need to know a kind of list of the nutrients that bacteria need. So um, let's look at the straightforward nutrients first. So obviously, you know, just like us, bacteria need a carbon source. So this is often uh, sugar or polysaccharides. And then very often uh, in industry certainly those would be derived um, or could be derived from food waste. So you know when they make packets of crisps you know there's an awful lot of very starch rich uh, liquid that comes off the potatoes that could be used by microbes as a, a source of starch. So yeah polysaccharides we're pretty much talking starch there I think. Uh, sugar, it could be glucose, it could be lactose. Um, and the, the key thing really for the growth of the organism is that they uh, need to manufacture the enzymes to deal with those food sources. So, you know, if you grow uh, organisms on, on maltose, then they're going to need maltase to break it down into glucose so that they can use it. If you grow them on glucose, they're not going to need to do that. Uh, if you're looking at um, perhaps lactose, that's not very common sugar in the environment because it's found in breast milk. So, uh, you know, the, the organism might need to actually stop and do some enzyme synthesis before it could actually use it. Um, they need a source of nitrogen just like we do. We get ours from amino acids by consuming protein. And certainly we could give uh, our microorganisms amino acids, um, which they could utilize. But many of them can also use inorganic forms like uh, ammonia. So quite often you could bubble that through a fermenter and the organisms would be quite happy using that. Uh, ammonium salts and of course nitrates, so they might be able to use any of those. <clears throat> Depends on what sort of bacteria you've got. They will also need a supply of vitamins and uh, mineral salts. So just like us, you know, they need sodium chloride and they need potassium ions and they need, you know, vitamin B perhaps. So they might need vitamins and mineral salts and they would need the correct pH. So to go to the more sort of esoteric bits, the thing that you know that affects sort of growth rates, I suppose, would be temperature. And there was a super little question about uh, cold um, microbes, hot microbes, medium microbes. As far as growing in a laboratory is concerned, we usually incubate at 25 degrees centigrade to discourage um, pathogen growth. So effectively when you're growing in a laboratory you are giving the bacteria their favourite food and you don't want to be growing something really nasty disease causing. Of course there are certain groups of people, um, I'm, I'm thinking environmental health inspectors, that may wish to grow at 37 degrees centigrade, which is body temperature, and that grows pathogens like fun. 
So what we in a laboratory don't want to do is to be growing pathogens, but certain groups of people might want to see all oh, what pathogens are there. <coughs> and last but not least, we come to oxygen requirements. And as far as you're concerned, as your syllabus is concerned, there are three groups that you need to know. There are the obligate aerobes. So these are bacteria that require, must have oxygen present. So these require oxygen to grow. So they'll only grow if oxygen is present. The opposite of that, the obligate anaerobes. And these uh, require the absence of oxygen. So if oxygen is present, they just, you know, they don't like it. They won't grow in it. And lastly, but not least, we've got the lovely facultative. Great word. And these are, we call them facultative anaerobes. And you really mustn't get confused about that. Now these grow in the presence or absence of oxygen. But better if oxygen is present. So that's the sort of nutrient requirement for the broth. Now, when we're, again, when we're growing in a laboratory, if you look at your plate from the side, so you've got your plate, agar, you're hoping to grow colonies on here, and it's got a little lid over the top. We really mustn't seal off all the way around the plate, so we do the Holy Cross thing. If that's the surface of your plate, you've got sellotape over there and you've got sellotape over there so it makes a cross shape in the middle. If you looked at the underneath you would have the edge of your tape there, 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 there and that lets oxygen in sort of on the quarters where it's not sealed off uh, and again that's sort of to discourage pathogenic growth really. Um, so it's to allow them to have the oxygen that they need in order to grow. <coughs> so, let's have a look at what some tubes might look like. So if we got a sort of a, and there are various ways of doing this, you could have a liquid broth and look at how cloudy it is at various points. So these are, this is what this is showing. Or you could have, uh, you could mix up your bacteria with a solid agar. And again, the bacteria will only grow in certain regions and the agar will start to look cloudy in those regions. Or one thing that uh, we did when I was at university was we did what's called a stab culture, which is where you take your tube, just put tube at this end, you put agar in it and you effectively stab an inoculating loop through it when you take it with bacteria on and when you take it out you know if the bacteria are sort of growing up here then they're going to be obligate aerobes and if they're growing down here they're going to be anaerobic so that's that would be a stab culture so if we look at what these diagrams are showing all the little black dots are representing bacteria so these ones the oxygen Remember, in a culture, will come in at the top. These ones are only growing right at the very top, up here. Big numbers of bacteria. So these we could identify as our obligate aerobes. They are not growing any further down than where the oxygen isn't reaching. Here, we've got them at the bottom. These are away from the oxygen. These ones would be our obligate anaerobes. So 
great diagram this isn't it? I lifted this off Wikipedia, thank you Wikipedia. We've then got um, ones that are growing all the way through, so they're anaerobes. But if you notice at the top you've got more, you've got more at the top. So these are facultative. That means they'll grow anywhere, but they grow best if there's oxygen present. Um, just for the sake of completeness, uh, these ones are ones that require small amounts of oxygen, so they're not right at the top, they're a little bit further down. And these ones have no requirement for oxygen growing all the way through, but they're actually tolerating the oxygen. So these are called microaerophiles. No idea what these are called. You can look it up on Wikipedia, because that's where I got the diagram from.